Claims of Neanderthal rock art in Europe have emerged in the literature over the last 10 years. Did Neanderthals really make rock art? Can these claims be scientifically validated? We traveled to La roche Catard in central France to see what has been proposed as the oldest, unambiguous Neanderthal engravings at up to 75,000 years ago. Other media led with a starting point at 57,000 years ago and present, the oldest cave with engravings in France and possibly Europe known to date. The dating is based on the team's proposed prehistoric accessibility to the cave and not of the actual engravings. A documentary titled Neanderthals, Humanity's First Artist? Exploring the journey of La roche Cotard archaeologist is scheduled to be released on Art TV today. Why a question mark in the documentary title? The current line between Neanderthal and Homo sapiens cave art in Europe is currently set at 54,000 years ago, based on regional archaeological evidence of Homo sapiens. The French study concludes that the La roche Cotard art must be Neanderthal because they dated accessibility to the cave earlier than 54,000 years ago. One can find all of the dating details in the La roche Cotard team's open access 2023 PLAS One paper. For clarification, unambiguous is defined as not open to more than one interpretation. The authors of the study do not give any indication of what the unambiguous art represents. The paper provides both sharp photos and illustrations of the cave art. In this illustration, we can view the finger lines, often referred to as finger flutings, made by the Upper Paleolithic artist. My de-stretch image of the research team's photo provides another perspective. Note that their illustration does not include coloration differences or natural irregularities on the La roche Cotard wall. There are also finger-drawn lines on another La roche Cotard panel. Again, their illustration does not capture the coloration differences or natural irregularities on the wall. My perspective is that the former two images constitute one integrated composition, which I have named the Panel of the Bears in the absence of any other name. The image was distributed to the media but not included in the PLAS One paper. Here we can view a de-stretch image of the same panel. You can see how the colors and lines connect across the panel. In my illustration, one can view the mother bear's brown muzzle that contrasts with her lighter upper head. A brown bear cub partly hangs down her back. A feline is behind the bear cub. The hind quarter of the feline appears to be shaped from the natural substrate by the artist's tools. There may be an extension to finish the tail. The curvature and coloration of the tail do not appear natural to the cave wall. With de-stretch, we can see differences in coloration between the bear cub and feline. The cat was formed from a deeper layer. Hungry hyenas look on the scene from the viewer's far right. The corpse of an antelope lays across the mother bear's flanks and hind. Thus, completing her form. The head of a servant faces towards the floor. There is an unclear feature below the mother bear's muzzle, perhaps a foot or hand. My initial impression was that the feature could be a paw of the mother bear. After further study, the orientation of the appendage didn't seem correct for the bear. There could be another large character out of this frame to the viewer's left, which the appendage belongs to. This panel has the potential for high drama. The hyenas are only inches away from the antelope carcass. A bite might awaken the sleeping mother bear. Messing with the bear cub appears risky for the feline. The predators don't appear interested in the servant at the bottom. A narrative has yet to fully unfold. There are other panels in La roche Cotard that we can work through with these approaches and perhaps find more dramatic scenes. On the triangular panel, D-stretch reveals reds and yellows of an adult mammoth, nudging her juvenile along with both trunk and raised left leg against a contrasting neon green background. The juvenile mammoth's trunk is slightly curled back. See how the artist started with natural irregularities on the panel to form the head of the mother mammoth. 
and then brought her and the juvenile to life with vertical finger lines. Ice or rain may be flowing down the heavy coats of these woolly mammoths. The animals appear to be depicted in a winter setting, consistent with hibernation on the previously shown panel of the bears. On the dotted panel, D-Stretch reveals an aurochs body and head facing to the viewer's right that are in neon yellow, while the horns are framed in red. This bovine is huddled close to a less obvious larger aurochs, whose head appears below the horns. The artist accentuated the ends of both muzzles with similar sunken features. What looks like icicles hang from the hair above the right foreleg on the closest aurochs, falling snow dot both. The composition is partly a test of seeing the forest through the trees, or in this case, the aurochs through the falling snow. The test may have been for an apprentice, such that we became, while initially being taken, by the visual ploy. On the linear panel, D-Stretch brings forth the head of a bear through the substitution of blue and black lines which outline the right ear. An alternative perspective are raised right and left ears at the top of the bear's head. The bear's right shoulder is structured by a natural irregularity. The muzzle is outlined in red. Neon yellow-green fill in the reaching right forearm and paw. A gust of air blows back the blackened fur of the bear, showing us the thin muzzle. This may be a winter scene as well. A small animal is at the bear's chest. This could be a newborn bear or another small animal. A brown animal, possibly another bear, has a similar small animal in its wide-open jaws. The bear's outstretched right paw is waving off an interested toothy fox in brown that patiently waits just beyond reach. The left ear and eye of the fox are developed from irregularities on the cave wall, which may have been added by the artist. The blunt snout is more closely representative of foxes in the Arctic Circle than France today. All of the LaRoche Guitard characters and compositions are incredible. My favorite character is a toss up between the fox and the feline with the curved tail. I hadn't seen either previously depicted in Upper Paleolithic cave art. What we have seen before is the artistic style of using fingers to draw lines on cave walls, such as in this gallery from the Chauvet Cave in France, dating to less than 37,000 years ago. We have seen such arrangements of bears and their cubs, with and without predators and corpses of other animals on the walls, of other European Upper Paleolithic caves. The panels on this slide have characters partially developed from irregularities on the cave walls as well. One might question, where are all of the Neanderthal cave art images of bears or any animals from the hundreds of thousands of years they were in Eurasia? Why have researchers only proposed Neanderthal cave art on the border timelines of when Homo sapiens were present? The authors of the laroche Cotard study did not make their decision of Neanderthal authorship based on the panel themes we have viewed today, as they were unaware of them at the time. Their decision of Neanderthal authorship was only made on the currently known 54,000-year dating of Homo sapiens in Europe and their proposed accessibility to the cave. If the 57,000-year-old plus dating of these La roche Guitard panels are correct, then they might be the oldest known figurative cave art in the world and extend the presence of Homo sapiens in Europe. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak at this year's San Diego Rock Art Association Symposium. I'm always open to cooperate on projects and virtually present my work to community and academic audiences. Other supporting work can be found on my webpage.